Grace here and welcome to Mika and the Witch's Mountain. I hope you enjoy this charming tale and watch to the end where you'll find out how I felt about this game. Ready for a tale about a young happy girl who wants to be a witch? Are you sitting comfortably? Then we will begin. Once upon a time, there was a young, enthusiastic, maybe a little cheeky at times, young girl called Mika, who decided to follow in her mum's footsteps and leave home to become a witch. Her mum always encouraged her and told her how great it was to be one. Maybe at times exaggerating slightly, but she only wanted the best for her daughter. After being dropped off by her mum, Mika felt a little sorry to be saying goodbye, and maybe a little anxious too. But she took up her trusty broomstick and bright yellow rucksack and made her way up the hill to the Stella Lighthouse to look for Miss Oligari, the mistress of Magic School. She found Miss Oligari in a blue flowing cloak and lilac floppy pointing hat standing on the edge of a walkway, looking a little intimidating, I must say. Mika introduced herself and proudly showed her the letter of recommendation that her mum had written. After a brief conversation and a glance through the letter, Miss Oligari looked a little flustered and sapped Mika off the hill. Slightly surprising Mika, I must say. Now I know what you're thinking. Poor Mika. That was a short game. <laughs> but no, she was okay. She maybe had a little bruise or two from the fall, but she soon recovered. To begin her adventures, Ollie's tried to figure out how to get back up the hill to the lighthouse. After she stood up and dusted herself off, Mika found that her beloved family broom was broken and she couldn't fly back to the lighthouse. Luckily in the distance she saw a village, so she decided to make her way there to see if she could get help. However, this did take a little longer than expected, as on her way she decided to do some exploring, where she noticed some little treasures she could collect. Mika loved this and loved treasures, and tended to do a little more exploring than she needed to. Approaching the village, Mika came across a very friendly looking lady wearing a lovely pink bow called Allegra. Allegra was lovely and chatty and offered to fix Mika's broom as much as she could, but unfortunately it still wasn't powerful enough to get her up the hilltop to the lighthouse. So Allegra offered Mika a deal. She would upgrade her broom but for a few gold coins at a time. Mika explained that she didn't have any money, but Allegra had an idea and said that there was a job at the delivery office in Orilla Town Main Square for a parcel courier and they would pay her. She also agreed that Mika could stay with her for as long as she needed as she had plenty of room. Thus, from then on, Mika became the island's parcel courier and met new, exciting, colourful and occasionally eccentric people with their own tales to tell and lots of adventures to get up to. So let's leave Mika there, delivering her parcels and take a look at Mika and the Witch's Mountain. Mika and the Witch's Mountain, developed by She Big and Nuke Fist, the creative minds behind Koa and the Pirates of Mara and Ankora Lost Days, brings a similar charm with its colourful and cute characters. For transparency, I received a free copy of this game from key mailers, but all the thoughts are my own and have not been influenced in any way. Gameplay. Mika and the Witch's Mountain is a single player 3D exploration game with platforming mechanics. It can be played with a keyboard and mouse or a controller. While I played with a keyboard and mouse, the broom flying mechanics are more compatible with a controller, making it easier to navigate the island. In this fantasy adventure, you play as Mika, an aspiring witch who delivers packages to the townspeople of a small island. You explore the island on your magic broom, avoiding mountains, rocks and cleverly placed obstacles that add a layer of challenge. The main story is lighthearted and easy to follow as you guide Mika around the island, earning coins by delivering packages. These coins can be saved to purchase new brooms, which will eventually help you reach your main goal, getting back to the top of the mountain. Along the way, you meet colourful characters, each with their own delightful stories. The game incorporates platforming elements as you navigate the sides of the mountains, using various techniques like wind tunnels. While it may seem simple at first, delivering packages without damaging them can be tricky, but with practice you'll get the hang of it. At the beginning of the game, you receive a delivery card, which is your main source of information. It allows you to check delivery details such as recipients, shippers, locations, package vulnerabilities, such as if you hit it by accident or drop it in the water, and delivery status. The postmaster rates your delivery performance with three stamps, 
Green for undamaged packages, earning you coins. Orange for mediocre deliveries, for damaged packages. And red for poor performance, which I haven't accounted yet, but it doesn't sound good. Learning to navigate the island smoothly is the key to successful deliveries. Graphics and sound. The graphics are vibrant, cute and cartoonish, adding to the overall fun nature of the game. The music is uplifting and complements the cosy ambience. Although there are moments where the music stops and this tends to lead to an uneasy silence. This might be addressed in future updates. There is no actual voice to dialogue, but the usual sound effects of laughs, grunts and other noises are well demonstrated through the visuals. Early access and performance. As the game is in early access, I experienced a couple of crashes, which the developers are aware of and are working to fix. Otherwise, the game ran smoothly without any major bugs. There are a few quality of life improvements I'd like to see, such as icons over parcel recipients' heads to make them easier to find, and a help tab to revisit tutorial pop-ups. Overall, I will give this game an 8 out of 10. I love the cute, cosy ambience of Mika and the Witch's Mountain with its simple storyline and quirky characters. There's more to the game than just delivering parcels, making it a delightful experience for fans of cosy exploration games. From fishing with glass fishing bowls, I love this idea, to finding collectibles, secrets and new outfits, there was always a reason to explore. If you enjoy cosy chill games with some platformer aspects, then this game is definitely for you. Please hit the like and subscribe button to support the channel and stay informed about my next video release. Thank you for watching and take care.